the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. Oh, baby. I come to you, gentlemen, today. A happy man. Mm-hmm. Me too. Oh, man. We got a banger here. First three. I don't want to hear no shit about this one, folks. <laughs> what are they going to say about this one? Huh? Yeah, there was a strong female who got chained up to a wall. Fucking whoa. <laughs> Hollywood bullshit. Now, <laughs> the first three episodes of Andor has been released on mm-hmm. Disney+. Plus. And it is good. I'm just, I'm not even going to like fuck around. Talk and, about character development. Yeah. Not even going to build up to it. Uh, it. It's everything I could have hoped for. Honestly. Um, yeah. To catch up the audience who's been following along with our little podcasting journey. Uh, you may remember all the jokes about Marvin not having seen Star Wars. Your boy did some work. I did a lot pre- of work yeah, he did. to prepare for Andor. I mm-hmm. told him, I said, listen, just watch Rogue One. It'd be a perfectly fine introduction into the Star Wars universe, and then, you know, eventually you could watch the original trilogy and so on and so forth. He said, nope. Nope. Fake news. I'm watching everything. Thanks to my boys over on Reddit, I found out the truth of the <laughs> matter. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta start with the trilogy at least. This guy. Now, I, I skipped a lot of stuff, you could say. Between, because I just watched trilogy oh, right, right into to Rogue One, right? No, that's fine. So, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, but it felt really good. Like as a person never seen Star Wars, yeah. watching those three and then watching that. No, yeah, like a good. You're good because you're up to date with like where Andor is, right? Right. Yeah. In the universe, you could have watched them the other way. You could have watched Rogue One trilogy. Yeah. Yeah, you could have. But that was my suggestion, just so you don't have to, like, burden yourself. But you did the work, Marvin. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I did the work. You, bi- you watched the first three, and you guys could expect the review for that uh, coming up this weekend on the podcast, and then there'll be a video out for it later in the week. But, yep. uh, yeah. Wait for that. I fell in love with this show literally in the first 10 minutes. Like, Me too. If, if you showed this show to somebody who didn't know any better, you wouldn't even have a clue that it was Star Wars. Yeah. Very distinct. And that was through the first three episodes. I felt like I was looking. I was like looking for like Easter eggs and things. And like, there is not a single inkling that this is Star Wars. Right. Other than the fact that you know that Cassian eventually you know, yeah. <laughs> joins the rebellion. Yeah. There's like, there's not a mention of the rebellion. There's no mention of fucking the Force or Jedi or Sith or lightsabers. Yep. Yeah. I was getting the Expanse vibes. From this actually i wasn't gonna say that but that's a that i do see that i it, was like you know like the on the lowest level with the people yep you know that type of yeah well this didn't have like the star wars like uh lightheartedness right and that's one of the things that mm. the people who loved uh rogue one loved about it is that it, it is like well well again sure it's like an integral part of the the saga mm-hmm. it stands on its own with new characters in a new place and all this stuff you know that show that movie was like very gritty and we've talked about it before it felt like a war movie and this is doing even more of that um a lot of this show i know is shot on location which definitely gives it a different feel we talked about that i think several times when we've talked we've mentioned like the eternals is a movie that was like shot on location so it's a distinct difference in feeling from the rest of the Marvel movies that are shot on a fucking green screen and the same thing here. Right. Uh, but this felt like it just, I don't know, like just in three episodes alone, it feels much bigger. It feels like a much more <laughs> like lived in world and galaxy. It does. Yeah. And a lot of the shots, like especially in that very first episodes, um, intro felt like I was, you know, it felt like a Ridley Scott movie or like a James Cameron movie. And I got like, uh, I got vibes. You said, uh, the expanse, which I agree with you, but I was getting vibes of like uh, Blade Runner and Cyberpunk, mm, even. Yeah, Cyberpunk vibes for sure. Yeah, and it was so fucking good, and it was all like visual stuff that you hadn't seen from Star Wars before. A lot of these Star Wars movies, as much as I love them, they're all just like reskinned versions of each other. Mm, right. You know, even the yeah. creatures in this show, some of like the alien species you see, are like different that you haven't really seen before. Um, at one point, I thought there was Jawas running around. 
in episode three, but it wasn't Jawas. It was something else, other some other short, uh, yeah, thingies. But I yeah loved it. I mean, uh, it's great. Could have easily been anything other than Star Wars. Um, and really could have. The story they're telling is not anything spe- like mm-hmm. exclusive to Star Wars, right? Yeah, like we guy know on the run. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and meets up with the the guy that's you know. Uh, it seems to be fighting some type of cause, and you know, it's not, mm-hmm. it doesn't seem anything really. Ex- well, of course, you know, yeah, this is a good show. I don't think it's great. Mm. It's a good show, there's gotta be uh, one. There's yeah. one. Well, and uh, you, it's mainly because of what you guys have been talking about. Like, so this is basically like the birth of the rebellion, right? Yeah, that's basically yeah. what we're talking about here in the time and, period, yeah. So what we've seen happening here, like Empire doing experiments, something's gone wrong. They left people to die. People are mad. Mm-hmm. Uh, like this is nothing. Like you, you guys, you guys said it. This is nothing. This is nothing exclusive to Star Wars. Like this is. I, it feels like I don't know. I kind of. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I was expecting something different from the birth of the rebellion, but it just seems like a little bit cookie cutter. So let's get into this a little bit more because I. I this was actually. Uh, one of the things I was going to bring up is I, because I think Rogue One had like a split audience. I think the majority of people enjoyed it, but I think there are a group of people like Dusty who want their Star Wars to be a particular way. And mm-hmm. Rogue One is such a departure from that. And that's one of the reasons I love about it. And I, I didn't mind the gritty storytelling of like, this is the day in the life of a person mm-hmm. under the rule of the Empire. And this is why they're mad. It just seems like the way that they upset these people is just like, uh, yeah, okay, well, that's, you know, that's just oppressive government. Well, there's nothing like, uh, yeah. all right. Yeah, that's okay. Cool. Well, well, I have a more interesting take for you and I mm. could be wrong, but I don't think I am. And I don't mean that like arrogantly leading up <laughs> to this. I also have been binging some star Wars. I don't know if I told you guys, but I watched, I rewatched rogue one to prepare for the show. And then I was like, okay, well, it's been a while since I've seen the original original trilogy. Let me watch those. I'm not all the way done with them. And then I'm going to go back and watch the prequels because I also recently, within the last like two weeks, have finished Obi-Wan and Boba Fett. So I'm like fully all Star right. Wars that in my mind. Yeah. And and the, the nature of Star Wars is that it's unfortunately at this point a very difficult um, undertaking to get into Star Wars. So I wasn't really joking. I was actually, I am proud of you that you've gotten into it <laughs> because I, you seem to be into it and we'll talk about it more when we actually review it. But yep. um, it there's a lot of lore. There's like what's canon, what's not canon, the years of like uh, ex- extended universe stuff. There's cartoons yeah. and video games and books and like all sorts of shit that is considered canon versus not canon and what Disney is deciding to pull and like uh, pull inspiration from and all this stuff. So uh I wanted to get a clear idea of certain things. So um, I was looking up on Wikipedia, which is the Star Wars wiki page. And it's a pretty <laughs> good, as far as it's I could tell, good. resource for like what's what and trying to like organize things. Mm-hmm. And a couple of things to realize. at th- So I never really actually understood this or realized this throughout my entire fandom of Star Wars. But... Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll find this out when you watch the prequels, but, uh, so a little bit of a spoiler, but Palpatine's rise to power is such that he sort of manipulates the, uh, galactic Senate into thinking that he could, the, the prequels take place during the Clone Wars, as I'm sure you figured out already. They've mentioned it before in the trilogy. Mm -hmm. Clone Wars throws the galaxy into turmoil and Palpatine comes in and is like, I'm the only one who could restore... Uh, order into the galaxy. Mm. So he dissolves the Republic, uh, declares it the first galactic empire, and he maintains the galactic Senate, and he reorganizes it into what becomes known as the galactic Senate. And you hear them actually talk about it in the first Star Wars movie, in that conversation where Darth Vader force chokes the dude. Grand Moff Tarkin comes in, and he's like, you don't have to worry about the... uh, uh, the Senate. Uh, I just got word from the Emperor that he uh, he dissolved the the Senate, and the last remnants of the old Republic has been swept away. So what Palpatine did was he maintains this Senate so that 
obviously the galaxy is a big place. He maintained the Senate so that uh, parts of the galaxy, star, certain star systems, felt like they had autonomy and felt that they were sovereign star systems. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, right. he was in ultimate control the whole time, and he did this to maintain order until the completion of the Death Star, which was when he could then, as Moff Tarkin says, they will be controlled by fear. Right, okay. So, what Dusty's saying is like, you know, there can, you know, these are, obviously, if this takes place on a planet called the, what was it, Ferrix, and it's a, it's a worker planet, and I saw another YouTube channel talking about this too, that's saying that they're like under the thumb of the Empire. But in actuality, they're not. This is actually one of those, quote unquote, sovereign star systems. Mm. And this group of like this police force that we're seeing chase Cassian in, in these episodes, they're not Imperial soldiers. Right. They're like, yeah, this is Metal Gear Solid. Right? These are, yeah. yeah, they specifically, are corporations yep, they are specifically malicious. a corporation that's part of this star system. And this star system, mm. as we could tell, has yet to be sort of touched by the empire. So it's kind of like uh <laughs> like a no man's land almost as far as like well the empire allows them to do their business out there and mm -hmm. they you yeah. know I mean as far as like fealty these, and they rule uh the corporation. It's like as far as like these fake police I'm saying like yeah. it's kind of a there's they don't have to worry about like them doing anything wrong because well, you see right. like they they kill people and they're like okay let's just get out well, of here yeah that's that's what the the guy said that the guy the guy uh um the one guy wanted to find out mm -hmm. find cassie and then he, the old guy was like <laughs> nah, cop. let it go these guys <laughs> were uh you know in a place they shouldn't have been yeah. doing something they shouldn't have been doing right you know, this is you know shit went wrong let's just sweep this under the rug and fucking you know Forget about it. Uh, right. And, and it, I don't know if you guys noticed, because it was briefly touched upon, I think maybe only twice uh, so far, obviously three episodes in, but partially from the guy that you just mentioned, the police chief or whoever the fuck he was. Yeah. And somebody else. He's actually going to a, a Senate meeting. So yeah. basically. He wants to look good in front yeah. of everybody. So he they, wants to keep the crime low. Yeah. So these guys, whatever this force is, the corpos, they work for their government. And then the government answers to the Empire in these meetings and what have you. But mm -hmm. little do they know, right. in the background, the Death Star is being created, and pretty soon, they're not going to have control None of it. Matter. They're basically yeah. like a city-state that you're a fucking yeah. suzerain of in mm -hmm. Civ, and then all of a sudden you're like, eh, you know what, I could use another city, and you go and fuck them up. <laughs> right? So yep. that's pretty much what's happening here, and I found that to be extremely interesting because we've never seen a place in the Star Wars universe. I mean, a little bit in, well, no, I was going to say Book of Boba Fett, but even, even not even in that show, we've really not seen a place untouched by the reach of the Empire, really. Mm. And it was really cool to see just this autonomous place kind of doing things their own way without stormtroopers showing up to fucking, you know, do some shit or, or what have right. you, like you see in yeah. Rogue One. Mm -hmm. right. uh, so I really like that. So let's talk a little bit about the plot of this show. Obviously, it's a prequel to uh, Rogue One, where Cassian, this is him leading up to being the spy and sort of, I guess, assassin for the early rebellion yeah. as we meet him in Rogue One. And this takes place on a planet called Ferrix, and it's like a worker colony, basically. I don't know if it was like a mining colony or what, but it's like just a bunch of like workers. That's not where he's from. He No, that's not where he's from. But it from. also seems like a, a trade town. Cause, um, yeah. Yeah. The guy on the bus, you know, when our other guy, I forgot his name. Luthen Ray. Luthen. Luthen, yeah. okay. But anyway, I, that's why I thought it was like a trade town too. Like, um, cause it, cause the guy on the bus is joking about like, you know, they get you coming and they get you yeah. when you get there. Like, it's like, you know, you go there to buy a lot of stuff, right? It seems like well, our... Yeah, that's what Phoenix is. Phoenix is a free trade planet mm -hmm. that is loosely under the rule of a corporation who is controlling another nearby planet. Yeah. So the corporation rules over the area, right. but they still answer to the Empire. But yeah, so Dusty mentioned um, Cassian's story is that he's from someplace else, but he's really not. We get in flashbacks uh, that he's from a planet called Canari. Yep. And he's living this fucking Lord of the Flies life. I don't see any adults there. And he, <laughs> he's from... Just, yeah, because <laughs> they're all dead. He's part of just like this, like 
tribe. Tr tribe, essentially, yeah. And yeah. Um, one of the things I actually didn't initially like about the show, I was like, not angrily, but I was like writing it down as a criticism when I was watching it, is that uh, there's no subtitles for the Canary language. I hate it. But then they, isn't that like a Star Wars thing? Like when there's aliens speaking or something, they don't really tell you. Yes, but I, but you learn in the third episode that there was a reason for it. It was, there was a, it was a specific writing reason, decision that they wanted you to really feel like how different of a place he came from. Cause when he meets, oh, right. Okay. Uh, the mom lady and they're showing you in that flashback, her rescuing, rescuing him, Marva. um, Marva, uh, you know, she's trying, like, she can't communicate with this boy. She's like, he's scared and he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Here's this new... Because that whole flashback is to show, like, this tribe witnessing, like, some crazy fucking technological shit they've never had any connection to before. Which is super interesting. Yeah, it, that, would, it would be like us... That kind of tribe exists even in this Star Wars time. Uh, that's the reason why they didn't have the subtitles. And then ultimately, I also realized, like... You don't really need to understand what they're saying. You get the idea of the scene and like you basically know what they're saying Pretty without much. hearing them say yeah. it. You know, it's like mm -hmm. not speaking of the language. Like if you hear somebody speaking Spanish, I don't speak Spanish, but by based on inflection and the body language, you can get an idea of what somebody's talking about. So I think they pulled that off pretty well. Um, so there's definitely a little bit of a mystery, I think, that they're building uh, to to Canary. And because he's because this show starts out, he's looking for his sister. Um, yeah. He, and he goes into a uh, a brothel, and he's asking some questions, and he gets bullied by two fucking corpo scumbags who think they're tough <laughs> and pro protected by the state. Little do they know, Cassian is not a man to be trifled with. Yeah, so these two guys are bullying him, and he he fucks them up. He headbutts the one guy, I assume breaks his nose and kills him, pushes that shit up into his brain. I and, was going to say, no blood again, Disney. Yeah. Well, he does shoot a guy in the face, though, Marvin. That's true. And doesn't but, take any shit. He, the guy's like, please, I won't say a word. We'll make up this story. And he's just like, nah, yeah. shoots him right in the fucking face. He realized, yeah, they show it in his face. He realized, like, this is the only way. Well, this, no way is, this guy is going <laughs> to. This is another thing I love about this show so far. And I think one of the things that maybe Dusty was trying to touch on is like, ah, this isn't my Star Wars type of thing. Because. That's not what I said. <laughs> no, I know. Hashtag not, not my Star Wars. <laughs> you don't have a character in Star Wars, is my point, that, like, is in the moral gray area. Sort of like the Walter White, right? We always talk about Walter White, where you like are actually rooting for him, but at the same time, you're like, well, he is a piece of shit and a psycho. <laughs> Cassian's sort of the same way. That's how they're building him, at least a little bit. Kind of, yeah. And we also see a little bit of that in Rogue One, where like he has this mission to kill her father. And right. he, he's a little bit broken Ooh, up yeah. about it, but he's going to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. And this is the same thing. He, this is so a he's guy... For the, he's for the cause. Like, how far between... Rogue One and the Cassian that we've seen in Andor, do you think there's a time? We'll find out. Because in Rogue out. One, he's like super well established as being a part of. Yeah, like, and, and this is clearly going to be them recruiting him. That's the whole reason right. why. I mean, right. uh, Stellan. That's what I'm just saying. Like, yeah. how far do you think? I don't know. Probably like, I don't know if they've explicitly said it in like, you know, I don't think so. plot summaries or anything, but I would imagine maybe like a year or two. Yeah, probably not that quickly. far, maybe even less than that. But right. either way, like he's a guy who he, I mean, he's down bad, you know, he he's fucking he, he's in rough shape. He owes money all over fucking town uh, to all the worst <laughs> kinds of people. Yeah. He's running out of favors with his very small. uh, Like circle of friends that that is like his inner circle. He doesn't have many and they're all getting sick of him. Like, hey, listen, this is the, this is the last favor I'm going to do for you, buddy. Yeah, the guy, the the guy he borrowed the ship from is like, nah, nope, yep. can't use my ship again. <laughs> now, now he fucking killed two fucking corpo fucking security guards or whatever the fuck they were. Rent the cops. And he's a guy who's willing to do whatever it takes to, to be self-serving, right? That's another important thing about Cassian. He's a very self-serving character, uh, at least so far in this show. And I think a little bit in Rogue One as well. Uh, yes, he's fighting for the rebellion and stuff like that, but like, you know, he's going to do what he's got to do. Uh, he kills these guards. He's looking for a canary girl. He says his sister in the brothel. And uh, we then we meet the fucking overzealous fucking cop who is like, two of our people were murdered. We have to catch this man at all costs. And his commanding officer, who you mentioned earlier, is like, 
dude, just like let it go. Like they were, <laughs> they fucked around with the wrong guy. They like, obviously, yeah, yeah. There's no reason <laughs> they to were get in a brothel, which they shouldn't have been. They followed the guy to the outskirts of town, which they yeah. shouldn't have done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he didn't listen. Nope. And he got all his whole shit killed. I think it was him and like one other survivor in the final yeah. little battle in episode three there. He got fucking hog tied <clears throat> like an idiot. Like this he guy also, was so useless yeah, as a commander. He, he also <laughs> ended up in the find out portion of fuck around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he sure did. He he found out. Boy, let let me just say. I think uh one of my favorite scenes from probably the entire show is uh when they're ringing the bells and then oh the bells my god just stop. that was so good yeah. i i while i was watching it i remembered earlier in the day you were like episode three is so good and then i was watching <laughs> it and i was gonna write episode three is so good but i want it, it was it like was really good <laughs> it was so good though we didn't find out what happens when the bells stop is the thing we didn't i don't think so I mean, <laughs> shit that, fucking popped off. <laughs> but was that ambush an ambush of the people or was that I thought that was Cassian's ambush? It was. It was. So like the the, the, the people his, that didn't actually do anything. Yeah, so his mom <laughs> his mom woman was saying like, "Oh, mom woman." <laughs> I can't think of her name. I keep forgetting it. Marva. <laughs> Marva. I should remember that cuz you're Marvin. <laughs> but she was saying to the to the corpo guys like Oh, this that that sound means a fucking reckoning is coming, and and he's like, yeah. well, "What does it mean?" She's like, "It's not what it means. It's not what the ringing means. It's what it means when, when it, it stops." stops. Yeah. And you're like, "Oh shit!" Like the town's preparing to fuck. Like you know, I don't think it actually had any meaning. Um, really, I maybe thought, she was just saying it to throw them off to make them nervous. Maybe I don't yeah. know that they that seemed to be a little bit too. Intense. I mean, it obviously ended up having meaning, but not from the from the people. But that's not true because. Meanwhile, one of the working people did cause some some pain. If you remember, he tied up that ship that was about to take off. Oh yeah, and that's made true. The ship crash. So, so you know what it probably some was. Stuff did happen. Well, so yeah, it was probably just like a like a signal to like, yo, we're being fucked with. Like, we're, let the worker Do class something. rise up. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it was cool. Talk a little bit about episode two, Marvin. You ever take about three hundred blow darts to your back? Oh, God, I would have been done after three, like, yo! <laughs> that dude was just like, uh, Enough. uh, 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 uh. And he was, just, was, did he die from, like, was it poison on those? I don't, I don't think he, just... I don't know, I was laughing real hard. I don't think he died, though, because <laughs> they dragged his body away, but. All oh, right, right. That shit was fucking funny. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the other things I found funny, and I fucking, I mean, obviously he was meant to not be liked, but Bix's boyfriend guy, her fuck buddy or whoever he oh, was. Oh, yeah. This guy was felt, so felt nothing when he died. That was he, great. He yeah, I felt absolutely nothing. And <laughs> he, he was trying so fucking hard. Like, oh man, she's interested in another dude. I better fucking rat this dude out. Right. Like Jesus, bro. And there was a funny moment where, like, in one scene, like, he's just like staring into a glass. And I laughed because, like, why is looking into a half empty glass of liquid like the universal cinematic language for like <laughs> I have something on my mind? They always do that in movies. I don't understand. Maybe that's that. the way to do it for uh, people that can't really portray it that well. Like, that's yeah. just the cheat code. Yeah, but fuck that, dude. Because then there was the scene where she just, like, <laughs> wakes up and he's just like, I couldn't sleep, so I sat here and watched you all night. It's like, bro, like, relax. You're coming on a little too strong here. But, you know, he got what he deserved and got shot in the chest with a laser beam. And he went out really stupid because, like, yeah. now you want to... Now you want to be like this fucking. No, you know, he was still simping for her the guy. way he was. Yeah, that's true. It was just like this. He was just trying so fucking hard that he got himself. We're killed. not like a simp. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta like take a chill pill, relax. She knows you like her, dude. Calm down. Like it's obvious. Again, <clears throat> this was just everything I think I could have wanted. It's like the anti Star Wars Star Wars show, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about, more about like so. I made that joke, right? They're not my Star Wars. So what didn't you like about it? Did you not like the fact that there were no real, like, super ties to the main Star Wars? Or or what? This is the birth of the Rebellion. Like, this is, like... I mean... We're getting flashbacks to Cassian, right? So yeah. this is basically it, right? What's his character building? He, yeah. Well, it's purposeful because this is the birth of the Rebellion. Right, but don't right? forget... The whole reason... That he's doing the things he is is because they're giving us snippets of his past mm -hmm. and what happened to him. We know that he was a child 
all the adults died. He had to grow up in a Lord of the Flies type scenario. And so basically some sort of government atrocity where the Empire said, oh, yeah, fuck this. We don't necessarily know what happened yet because it hasn't all been been revealed. And I'm sure we'll see it as episodes grow on. And maybe it'll be more fascinating, but it's a government atrocity makes him mad so this is the way he is I, like i don't I, keep in mind the trailer does show him flying. it's a little uninspiring i mean i guess there's no really other way to do it because the empire has to be uh well, but hang on know, abusive and controlling and yeah i mean they're manipulative the and murderous for <laughs> somebody to hate them enough to create a rebellion well that's but, the thing i was um, saying earlier right so you know as i mentioned like how palpatine creates this false sense of of security in the galaxy while, you know, basically he tells, you know, the, the Imperial citizenry, like they truly believe that he was restoring peace and stability because he vowed to end corruption in the Senate or drain the swamp, so to speak. Uh, it's actually, I was <laughs> laughing quite a bit as I was learning about the, the structure of the empire and how much of a, uh, soothsayer George Lucas might've been. But, uh, but yeah, Palpatine's goal is to maintain order and, you know, do all this shit and prevent uprisings and all this stuff. And there are those little sects of people like Mon Mothma and Leia's father who realize like, nah, this guy's up to no good. Even Princess Amidala realizes it in, uh, what was it? Uh, Revenge of the Sith, where, you know, she says this is how democracy, what did she say? This is how democracy dies in, in thunderous applause no. or whatever. Yes, democracy dies with thunderous applause, correct. And, yes. you know, so... um. You're gonna get your 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 rebellion stuff because in the trailer they show him zipping around in a Tie Fighter and like doing all this stuff. So there will be more connections to, you know, what you're talking about. I I would venture to guess, but as it is right now, I don't know. I was just loving seeing like the day to day, of like an unspecified star system. It made the it made the galaxy so far far away feel so much bigger than it's ever felt before for me. Because like it's always like Star Wars has always been the same cast of characters, or this person's related to this person, or it's like a Jedi and it's like good versus mm. evil. This is really not any of that. It's this is really about like class struggle, and uh, like a lot of these workers here, like they're like, ah, eh, yeah, like fuck the Empire, but they don't really fuck with us, so whatever. And and but it's not like the, uh, again, this is this is how the rebels came to be. Yes, but this th- is the story of the rebels yeah, but- and why they hate the empire and how they became rebels. At first it was sections of people on planets who got tired of shit and fighting back. And then they started, you know, grouping together with other sections yeah. of people and they created, but you're you know, seeing a, that. an infrastructure. You're seeing that. Right. Ferrix, yeah, this is the very, Ferrix is a place where these first three episodes take place. This is right. not a planet that's been affected by that yet. So that's why a lot of these guys, Correct. The they're right. just like, oh it's, yeah, the Empire can, probably sucks. It's like, Canari. Canari is the key point <laughs> of the the birth of. Well, that's the, why the he is. That's what I'm. Yes. yes, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what I that's like. That's what about, I'm talking about. Though. But we're okay, talking so. about three episodes. There's still what eight or fucking seven that we haven't watched yet. So I'm saying with these right. three episodes, I just really loved like the lo- like the the the. the uh, just like I said, the day to day operations of people that have nothing to do with fucking anything else, but just living their lives. And that's why I thought the third episode was so good with the fucking gongs bang, because this is a group of workers who were like, they all collectively know without having to like plan it out. Like, oh yeah, like we're all for each other. Like this is, that's why I made the joke. This is a worker uprising. Like, you know, fuck the corpos. Like yeah. they don't, they're not saying fuck the empire. They're saying just fuck the corpos. Or that... fuck whoever's fucking with us. Exactly. Really. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I thought that that was so cool. I mean, I, you're going to get all the stuff that you're hoping and looking for, for sure. The Canary mystery thing, they show up on this, you know, they, they see that huge pit, right? Or whatever the fuck that was, where the crash ship was at one point. Mm. Um, and, you know, we know from Book of Boba Fett, a little bit we got a little bit of of uh um information about that and and possibly canary which you know your theory is probably correct we know that the empire goes around and just basically rapes these planets for their natural resources and then fucking destroys them and leaves them in waste when they're done that's what they did mm-hmm. to uh the planet of the uh uh mandalorians uh, mandalore is the name right 
And well, they said it in one of the episodes. It was like a, it was a tragic mining accident. That's how all the adults died. Which yeah, we know obviously isn't the case. Right, something right. else happened. Mm-hmm. We don't know exactly what. Yeah, but and this it's is pr- and the it's key to yeah, and it's probably the fact it's probably imperial um, raping of Fuckery. natural resources. We also saw it in Rogue One too. Yeah, they where, were testing something or yeah. something went wrong. And we yeah. al- we also saw it on the planet in Rogue One where they were getting the they were mining the kyber crystals. So basically, the Empire just goes to a place, does what it wants to do there, and then fucking leaves it in ruin and takes off. So that's why you get this like cascading snowball effect of star systems just like, well, fuck the Empire. Right. So, and this is obviously leading to that. And I'm sure whatever we find out later on about Canari as his memory maybe either comes back to him or as we start to uncover it, this is what's going to motivate him to probably join the rebellion and be like, oh yeah, yeah, fuck these guys. I do have a bigger purpose than just being like a fucking thief and a crook and like worrying about myself. I think this is going to be the character arc of him being like a self-serving kind of piece of shit to like, oh, well, I could actually be a bigger part of this thing. And that's what was so good about Rogue One too. You know, again, I said it a thousand times now, it does heavily rely on a huge, huge, huge plot point, like the plot point of the original trilogy. But... you know, those movies, you're like, oh, clearly, like, Luke's the hero, and fucking Han's the hero, and Leia's the hero, but, like, this shone light on, like, there are a lot of other unsung heroes. Uh, no, it's it's a fine story, uh, and uh, as it goes on, I may be become more interested to uh, how the story develops, but so far... Mm, so you're not it's, interested. It's, 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 <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's not great. All right, that's fair. I like I said, I'm full. Good, not great. I'm like <laughs> I'm like all into this shit. I'm I like I like the idea of dropping three episodes at once, but it makes me want even more. Like even yeah. as it, like I mean, it was a good block of three though. Yeah, but just give me um, fucking everything, please, for the love of God, stop with this. Yeah, the third really felt like a, a finale to the this little mini yeah, it, intro series. It actually like the, the three felt like an intro by themselves. I'm glad <laughs> you said that because it's one of the things I wanted to say arguing with Dusty is that I think they're blocking this out in like sort of like chapters almost chapters of episodes right so this was like the block of like hey this is what Cassian was doing this is his motivation he's looking for his sister he's a thief he's he, he's this is who he is as a person the next block maybe of three will be like him and Stellan Skarsgård and Stellan Skarsgård being like yo dude like you got all these skills that would be a great asset to this this uh, cause that I'm working for Right. Oh, what's the cause? Oh, well, we're working for the rebellion, and the rebellion plans to fucking take on and topple the empire. Well, why the fuck would I want to get involved with that? And then he's <laughs> like, "Oh shit!" Makes the connection. Like, well, they're responsible for the fucking destruction of my planet and the death of my parents, and whatever the case may be. Sure, I'll join. And then the final yeah. block being like whatever leads into his position in Rogue One, which is master assassin and spy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. I'm I'm fully on board with it. I'm glad you are too. Um, you'll come around, Dusty. They always do. <laughs> Let me try a little um, bit. Of, you will like Andor. <laughs> a little Jedi mind trick on you. What were you gonna say, Marvin? <laughs> I'm not just. I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah. Uh, I like that it's slow. Um, especially coming from watching the sh- the movies, where it's like they're shoving so much different lore at you all the time. It feels like. And that's why I'm saying, like, again, it's so refreshing to see us to take a step back from this grand space opera of good versus evil and force and Jedi and fucking Sith and everything and, being like and a, all this stuff. A life of death. Yeah. Of, and this like is a... just like a very like localized story about one guy and his role in it. Because, but, yeah, as I've said before, still tied in enough to where same it's like story is just yeah, on a micro level. Yeah. And as yeah. I said, this, there's a vast sandbox in which you could play in. Uh, that these stories have built and you know uh, for his credit in the new trilogies ryan johnson with the second one tried to do that he Mm. he 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 said let's okay like listen we had our skywalker saga like let's just let's try to take a step back from it and people shit on him for it and i thought that was the best movie of the three and Mm. and you know as much as i love all, like Star Wars in general, Rogue One is my favorite one, I think, if I had to pick. And that's because of the departure that it has. Mm. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's it's so, in, it's it's just interesting to me. But yeah, I mean, we'll see where the series goes. 
let us know in the comments what you think of these first three episodes and uh, what you think is in store for the rest of the series. If you have not done so already, subscribe to the channel. We're probably going to be breaking down each episode week by week as it goes. So uh, come back and hang out with us soon. We'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Hasta.